Thank you. Congratulations for opening this uh, great new experience. Uh, we're very excited to get the Cooks Tour from Jim Trecker at 2 o'clock today. So the first question from the society, and then we'll have you know, open Q&A, is talk about that process from idea, uh, first renderings, to induction. It started five years ago with the Hunt family casting around wanting to do this general idea of a Hall of Fame. It took then uh, more than two years to deal with acquisition of, uh, of financing and additional land and just making sure the whole thing did make some sort of um, financial and construction sense. And then two and a half years ago in March of 2016, we had our first meeting um, in Frisco, actually it was in Dallas on, the, and on that day uh, at the Unity Hunt offices where the very first renderings were given to us. Obviously a, a design firm had been engaged prior to that, f quite quickly prior to that, and they came in with what was phase one of the renderings and right off the bat we were extremely pleased at what we saw, the ideas that Healy Kohler came up with. The scarf motif which you see uh, on, the, on, the, on the proscenium out front as well as in, inside the big banquet room, that was one of the first things they came up with. The scarves in the scarf case in the lobby. Um, and um, we settled on design, took about six months or so, six to seven months, I could, that might even be a little too short a time frame, to settle on what became about uh, volume eight or nine of the renderings when all the various tweaks were made. No, we don't like this. The Hunt family would like this. The Federation would like this. A lot of collaborative effort. And then it was, uh, of course, you know, put out to bid for, for construction. And um, I can only say, uh, and I think Jorn would certainly uh, second this, it, an enormously collaborative and complicated effort, but one that all the things I've been involved in in my career, this one really went off without a lot of shouting, screaming, or, or disagreements. I don't remember any meetings where there were any showdowns over we're doing A, B, or C. It was a tremendously collaborative uh, and uh, mutually res respectful arrangement all around, which I, th I think we saw an exciting, and I'm going to use kind of a silly word, sort of a, a happy looking Hall of Fame. And I think that's the result of the way that that everybody sat around the table and did it. And when Jorn came on board um, in June of 17? 16. Say June, 17. June of 17. Uh, he probably, he didn't have to go through all the design phase stuff, but he inherited all the difficult things, the construction, the, the, the actual technology and so forth. So I'm, I might have had sort of the, the little more of the fun phase. Jorn, Jorn is the man who actually got the doors open. Uh, so I, I, I think it was, a, it was a project with an awful lot of moving parts, awful lot of moving parts, this, because it was a stadium construction as well. It wasn't just building four walls. And it's, not, it's not your father's Hall of Fame. I've used that phrase to the point of boredom over the last couple of days, but, but it's just not. It's very different and took a different type of, of building to do because it was within an existing structure. Uh, and if you, if you, when you have a chance, when, when visitors have a chance to come, make sure that they stop and see the floor cases uh, in, in the banquet room, because there's 22 floor cases, and you might think that's easy. Not so easy because there's beams underneath it, there's plumbing underneath it. They're, they're, it took a long time to decide where those suckers go. Um, but it was great fun, every bit of it. You, want, well, you, know, you, you inherited the tough, the tough stuff. I, did, I, I remember my first day on the job, June 6, 2017. I'm at work. My first day, I get my little office, mm. little piece of plywood, basically. And at the end of the day, Jimmy Smith is like, hey, we're going to a meeting at NEC. So I go down to NEC and we start talking. To, I, go, I walk into this meeting, I meet all these people. I'm like, I don't know why I'm here. And they're like, hey, yeah, so facial recognition. And I'm like, what? So I walk in that day, my first day on the job, and like this, had no idea we were thinking about this kind of technology. And I walk into that meeting and uh, sat down for the next two hours, and then I got really excited about the project. 
because we were gonna we were gonna try something that's never been done before. What you see inside that Hall of Fame, nobody's ever attempted to do that before with uh, facial recognition. People have always talked about facial recognition as security, keeping people safe. And we have an opportunity to change that narrative around uh, around facial recognition to turning it from security to customer experience and making it a most personalized experience based on you just walking up to something. And it's it's been the most incredible project I've ever been a part of in my life. I'll follow up and then we're gonna open up the floor to, to questions. What in your uh, career you, know, you said it was the most valuable experience uh, that you've had. What prepared you to pull this off in, in, in your background or your connection to the game and uh, how you made this all happen? Go ahead. Go ahead. I think I, I remember my first interview. So I, I applied for this job on the World Wide Web in December of 2015 because I heard it was coming. And it was it was a long process. I mean, that was December of 15. My first interview was April of 16, August of 16, May of 17, and finally got offered the job. And I, I, I think for me, I've I've been a soccer guy through and through. I've worked in pro soccer teams for 17 years. Um, and I think when I when I think about those interviews, I think at the end of the day, what they wanted in this position was somebody that had the passion for the sport. Not necessarily just a curator that came in that understands the museum world or the experience world. Because um, I don't think they would have gotten what we have down here at the end of the, at the, end of the stadium. Uh, if you put somebody in that position that maybe doesn't understand the sport, um, I think you're gonna get a different experience down there. And I, I think, mm -hmm. all right, I. I think and I hope that I've brought a passion to this project uh, of being so involved in this sport. I mean, last night, and I might get emotional when I say this, but last night for me, was a, that's the culmination. But it also led to some of the design tweaks in there. When you do look at it, some of you had a chance to take a peek. Um, the cases are not crammed full of things. They're lightly populated so that you can really see one or two things. We didn't want to blur people over, like you might go in a library or uh, you know, an art museum where there's 20 paintings on the wall. We didn't want to do that. We wanted you to come be invited into the cases to learn a few things. So a lot of this was fairly subtle, but, but all fits into the experience format rather than a museum format. We didn't just want to have an archive of everything that we that we own and put it behind glass. Wherever we want to go. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank morning, you. Morning, Derek. Uh, Jim, I guess you're the question. I want to. What are the realities about getting the archive out of North Carolina? Who's going to pay for it? Where are they going to be maintained, and who will be here to allow people to access the archives? I know the people to whom you can address those questions, but I'm not sure that I, I have any answers. The, the, I, I will be very honest, there is no action plan at the moment, and I'm using my words very carefully, there's no action plan for it, but it is, it is on the radar, it's on the near-term radar, that is a significant effort of phase two. And I can only tell you now that it's, it's going to be talked about in the coming months. I don't think it's going to be talked about until after the first of the year. Um, the archives will come to the Dallas area, probably in a, you know, a, temp a, a properly controlled environment. We, we want to get them out of, out of North Carolina. I don't think that's happening in the, in the next couple of months. And then, of course, they need to be organized and available for research. And Tom, you were you have had the opportunity fairly recently to be there. That's that's going to be a relatively heavy lift, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, uh, we might have to be patient on that one. But who's going to pay for it? There's a collaborative effort among the Hunt family, the Soccer Federation. We have we have sponsors. I I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I don't. I don't think that answer matters. It, there, there are resources that will be tapped for this. 
I think what's most important is U.S. soccer, they own everything inside of that building, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they understand that there's a process that needs to happen. We have been completely focused on last night, right? Today, we change our focus a little bit, right? And we need to maintain a building. Um, we need to make sure that this Hall of Fame doesn't have the fate of the old one. Uh, and, I, and I think U.S. Soccer is going to be on their radar screen very soon to get those things properly archived and, and put in their but proper position. From the position. standpoint of the people sitting here in the room, there's a fabulous museum, but the archives may be more important to them in the long run. So. And, and, and we, we have a giant task. I mean, what, what this guy has done over the last, how long have you been involved in this project? Four years? Two, two and a half full years. And, and uh, I, I don't want to tell you how many days in North Carolina opening boxes. <laughs> I mean, literally, this guy was going to North Carolina and opening up boxes and not knowing what was going to be inside. I mean, he's the real. As Jack he's, knows. <laughs> he's the soccer Indiana Jones I found right now. One day myself, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what we don't want to do is send you somewhere where you have no idea. You're just going to open up boxes. Right. We've we've got to get things archived, and we're, we're just not there yet. Okay. It's good, and that's going to be one heck of a process. That's a big process. Because I mean, we're, we're happy to hear the commitment. Yes. Oh, absolutely. How, how many boxes of there, 1994? There were, oh, we haven't even gotten into the 1994 pallets, and there are hundreds of them. And I would tell you, it is. <laughs> Put that at the bottom of the priority list. <laughs> it is at the bottom of the priority list. It's just paper. But if you want to have the application forms for every volunteer who worked at the World Cup in 94, we have them. Don't ex I don't want to explain why we have them, but <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that has to be addressed down there in the way of paper. Alan never said you could get rid of them. Right. So we kept them. It's there, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's my point. We don't even, where are, where's that box, right? Like we have to go through all of that oh, stuff and be is like, a, a, is, it, is it labeled? There is an inventory, yeah. There is an inventory and they're labeled, although they're, the, the this labeling is... Doesn't match the skids necessarily, so. Well, it, it is archival labeling, the box XQT46. Yes. The last time, <laughs> the last time I was in the archives, I, know, know, I think I counted fourteen hundred boxes. But that's really that's really bad news because I thought it was about a thousand just on an eyeball. I know I've opened about eight hundred, yeah. and, and that doesn't include the boxes that came off the floor, where material that came out of exhibits was boxed. I have not opened. I know where those are exactly. Yeah boxes are the ones yeah. that were in the archive. Yeah. And most of them, many of them, should have something in them from Ted Brown. He did a tremendous job. Oh yeah, there's no question. Yeah. But it, it's been, the there's lots of provenance sheets, no yes. easy answer to what's mm. in this box until you, right, until you open it. It's, but it. it's been such an incredible process. Like, I mean, I remember the last time I was there at the gym, we were, remember we just opened up boxes and Jim found officially the oldest thing. This, this oldest, 1899 so metal. And you didn't even know it was there. No. We were, we were headed for we were headed for the airport. Yeah, we the airport. Uh, let's one more box up here. And son of a gun, open the box and there's this wonderful metal from True Blue FC, um, which I thought was pretty cool. So it's on display. From the 1800s. Yeah. Yeah. It, it made it on display. It's amazing. Yeah. Ultimately, my question is, so what's the legacy plan for 2026? How does the Hall of Fame work into that? It's maybe unfair to ask it, it, that at 9 o'clock. A little bit unfair. A little bit unfair, yeah. Uh, but, it's, but I think it's an exciting question. Yeah. Until we get a World Cup organizing committee in place, uh, that's, it's a little hard and not, not, not being snarky or trying to duck the question. Uh, believe me, all the things you've mentioned are certainly in my radar, and I know they're in the hunt radar, is there a legacy plan? Um, I'll, maybe, I'll take a chance on stepping on Jorn here. Maybe he knows more than I do, but, but I doubt we're quite there yet for a, a plan of point A, point B, point C. But the idea of rotating exhibits, borrowing things out of here, uh, just for simple starters, maybe you know, uh, at 
an MLS game in every stadium, you know, 28 stops in the course of a summer. That's already been foreseen. Again, I can't give you a paper that shows it yet. Uh, again, we have tried like the Dickens to get to October 20th, 2018. But th those sort of thoughts are absolutely floating around, but it may be a little bit early to, uh, to, to put any flesh on it. Yeah. I mean, literally, I'm having conversations with Alexandra at U.S. Soccer right now because she she's in charge of the Fan Fest at all of these events. Uh, Cock Champions. She was here this week. Uh, she wants a traveling Hall of Fame. Uh, we're gonna figure that out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We're not there yet. Uh, you know, but she she wants every time that we are we have a game, men's team, women's team, whatever she. She wants a piece of history there, and we're, we're gonna figure it out. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, I told her we need to talk about this next <coughs> week, <laughs> meaning this coming week, um, but, but I think it's an important thing, and that, that's what we want at the Hall of Fame. Uh, again, we wanna, be, we wanna be different. We wanna be in people's faces. Um, you know, I, I think about like we, I mean, how many hours we put into this Essential 11. Mm -hmm. Right? Did anybody see that promotion out there? Right? Yeah. Like, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars of promotion put into something, right? To get people engaged. And I tell you what, it was like U.S. soccer is still like that. How did you do that? Mm. Uh, we, we have 80,000 people submit their Essential 11. Think about that. In the month of August, 80,000 people mm. put in an Essential 11. That's, that's amazing, right? And, uh, we just want to be forward thinking like that. So, we, yeah, we're, we're going to figure out a traveling exhibit. Uh, you can't steal something out of the no, Hall of Fame right now, I'm going to tell you that. Uh, but we're, but we're going to get there. I know where the keys are, though. Um, <laughs> let me just real, real quick on that. We've been, I was approached, I haven't ever told anybody about this yet, but I was approached by the former mayor of Fall River, Massachusetts. Fairly decent soccer tradition. Could we get if we can find you a proper safe place, can we get a few artifacts and have kind of a soccer day? I said yes. Now, I have no plan for that. There is no date, but we've already gotten some things like that. So maybe in the future, the six Billy Gonzales medals go up there for a week. So there's, there's a whole blender of ideas. And, and I would be okay with like, like a situation like that, like I'm just speaking off the cuff, but like, would be okay with if there's a permanent exhibition in their place, right? Be like, hey, this is a piece of the National Soccer Hall of Fame in, it, it, in Massachusetts. It's like you need to go see the rest of mm. it in Frisco. Yeah. Like, we should probably permeate ourselves out like that. And I think I think that makes sense. And we're gonna. We're, I think we're gonna find ourselves. As I, I think I'll be involved a little bit going forward. But I think we're gonna find ourselves in a bit of a blender with ideas coming at us and having to say, "Whoa, slow down. We can't do all of this." You know, and funnel as we did with the mus with the uh, experience uh, as to what finally ends up there. But th th it's a it's a wide open palette right now. I was just thinking along the lines of maybe that's something where a lot of people in this room can help. Anniversary planning. Yeah. Um, between now and 2026, there's going to be a whole host of, of dates. Yeah. That oh yeah. yeah. Be, um, and you know stuff that people have worked on in all parts of the country, where you guys can leverage. You know, we put together a, a, a list of dates and say, look, uh, this date, this region, this country, this city, that happened here. Yeah. You guys can leverage that. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's great. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to seize the moment. Yeah, go, seize the moment. On this very thing, and play another team. Uh, a small museum in D.C. called the Smithsonian uh, has a traveling exhibit mm -hmm. called uh, Sports in America. You know, oh no, hometown teams how sports shaped America. And I was involved in New Jersey. It was a traveling exhibit. Comes in an 18 wheeler to the Yogi Bear Museum in Montclair. Literally, the staff opens it up. They put it together. I mean, it must have been so well engineered that in D.C. It was like a big Lego project. And literally, you can walk the museum, and it was a national story. And then they had the possibility of adding some local flavor. So I, I have materials on that. You can I think it's all share. You can talk to the Smithsonian. It, it, it was so well done. It was really, really impressive. So when you talk about that idea, I immediately think of, of the yeah. Smithsonian hometown yeah. teams. I think it's awesome. The okay. Baseball Hall of Fame did something like okay. that with uh, yes. about African Americans in baseball. And it came in a bunch of boxes, and you set it up. 
it was, I don't think it had any authentic uh, materials, or it didn't, I should say, but it had these panels which were really interesting, and then, like you said, you could add a, a local touch and bring in some materials from local collections or maybe loan from the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and then to complement this kind of generalized thing. So that was smaller. I don't think it took a whole 18-wheeler, but so you could scale it, I guess, depending on the needs of the, of the can I, can I jump back for one second and address what David had brought up a few minutes ago, and I know, Tom, we've talked offline on it. In terms of phase two, in, 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 in the thinking that's coming from my area of expertise in this project, one of the top lines is forming and opening and consolidating some sort of relationship with SASH. It's very high on my radar. It might not be as high on Jorn's, but he's got other things to do. But it's, it's one of the things I, it is, it's already in with the Federation with, that, that after the first of the year, I want to sit down with them. I want to continue sitting down with you and see what we, what we can build here. Because yes, you guys have a lot of things we would like, whether that's just plain information, guidance, uh, you talk about specific dates. I don't think either one of us is going to sit up here and say that that we have all that stuff in our in our daily plan. Or we we don't. We don't have the bandwidth that that that's sitting out here. And we want to make sure that we can we can work together. What that relationship is, how what a time frame is, I, I can't tell you right now. But and I just send them to Jim right now, right? But. Jim doesn't always have the answers, and we need to figure out things. So I, I hope that this, and I, I'm, I'm glad you guys are here and a part of this weekend. Uh, you know, I hope that we can reach out, whether it's through Tom or whatever, and say, hey, we have a question. I don't know the answers, right? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know who Archie Stark was until eight months ago, right? And I so made that clear. I, mean, I, I made that I clear. <laughs> but I'll be honest, I didn't. You know, so it's. That's... I hope we can reach out. Uh, and you guys can help us. Uh, that, that's what I want out of this relationship, because we don't we don't know all the answers. And then, like, secondly, personally, like, I'll, I'll never forget. Like, it was the fall of 2015 when I heard about this project. And I'll be honest, I was unemployed. I had just the Austin Aztecs of 2015, right, had gone away. Uh, our stadium flooded. I'll never forget, like watching. I mean, literally, it was a Memorial Day or something. Memorial Day, or, and I'm literally watching the Austin Police Department save a guy from our stadium who was walking, and the floods came. And I'm like, well, this is clearly not good, <laughs> right? Uh, and we we had to jump and move and change stadiums. And I I knew things. We're going to go south at that point. I just, and I remember hearing about this project, and I was like, how do I get myself in front of these people involved in this thing? Because, it, and, and I'll be honest, if, if it had been a building not inside of a stadium, I wouldn't have been excited about it, as excited about it. Um, you know, to put... I'm a soccer guy, right? Like I, there is nothing more exciting to me than doing all the hard work Monday through Friday and coming and watching your team perform on Saturday, right? Like that for me is the pinnacle of why we work in sports. My fiance is like, you have to go, you have, you have a game on Saturday? And I'm like, yeah, I got another game on Saturday. But this is, this is why we do this, right? I'm glad I'm not selling insurance from eight to five trying to get somebody to buy car insurance for me and not somebody else, right? This is why we do this. And personally, this is a, this is a legacy project, I hope, mm -hmm. right? It's to be able to walk out of here someday and say, we, we did it, we, we did it, right? I, I'm not gonna be here forever. I'll be honest, I hope I'm not here for more than two years after we open up the doors. Uh, my goal is, you know, it, it was an important job for me personally. Uh, this is on camera, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say this. And edit it out. Yeah, okay, maybe. Uh, it was, I'm in an interesting position because I am, I am working for the Hunt family, right, who I've never worked for before. I am working for U.S. Soccer, who I've never worked for before. <coughs> 
But on my mind, personally, is 2026, to be honest. And you know what? To be able to be in a position that the Hunt family is leading the bid for Dallas to host games, U.S. Soccer running the bid, you know, like the day we got announced that we were hosting the 2026 World Cup, it's just the cherry on top for me. You know, my goal is to, my goal is to do the soccer community proud in this side of the building, and then I want to go help run a World Cup in 2026. <laughs> to be honest, you know, like that's, I'm trying to think that far ahead, and it's been a goal of mine, and to be in the position I am and working with the amazing people that I'm working with right now. Uh, you know, I hope that nights last night and, you know, moving forward are, are you know, personally, because you asked personally, is, are, is a way to put yourself on a pedestal to hopefully do what you want to do at the end of the day. I mean, the people that lead soccer in this country right now were mostly involved in the 1994 World Cup. When you think about it, you take a 30,000 foot view. And in 30 years time, I want to be in that group uh, that helped run a 2026 World Cup uh, and be one of those leaders in soccer moving forward. So, personally, that's what I want to do. Okay. Um, I, I want to add as well to, to David's thanks um, to both of you for being here and for all the work you guys have done to support us. And I hope we can continue that in the future. Um, I agree with David about the archival um, news. That's, that's enormous. Um, I, I'll plant the seed um, and now, and then maybe maybe that's something we can kind of continue the discussion going forward. But um, having seen other sports organizations go through dealing with their archive from baseline zero, uh, where they had exactly the same boxes and boxes and boxes and no idea what was in it, um, there there there's. A whole process of archival norms uh, that are very, I mean, I'm sure you know uh, about this stuff, but I have seen other sports organizations who started out and said, oh, great, yeah, yeah, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, and then they, they didn't process their archive, and the archive was a mess. FIFA's archive, for example, is a disaster, the way it's organized. Um, the UEFA archive and the IFC archives are very well um, cataloged, very well. They're extremely well and easy to use as a, from a research perspective. It also allows outside people to use those sources and you know develop the narrative around that to talk about the, the sport, the games, etc. Um, so I want to plant the seed about archival norms. So before you guys are, are making those decisions, mm -hmm. hopefully we can we can support you know um, if if you have you know, have a conversation about that um, just to make it the best uh, end user experience yeah. from a research perspective. I want to come back to what you said, Jordan, about legacy um, in 2026. And I think that's that's my question to you is um, going forward, uh, you know, there's this incredible opportunity in eight years, incredible. Um, and I think it's something uh, that, uh, that Qatar at currently is trying to deal with and never solve it. Qatar is a country that has no soccer history, zero. The US is a country that has huge soccer history, but it's all in hidden and nobody knows it. Um, and the U.S. is seen internationally as a country that knows how to run big events, big business, has stars, big leagues, etc. That's the perception outside. Oh, you guys, but you're not really a soccer country, right? And my question to you um, from, the, from the Hall of Fame side is, going towards 2026, here is the opportunity to speak to the rest of the world and say, look, we are a legitimate soccer country. We really are. Here's our story. Um, and it's not just uh, women and youth who play soccer in this country, which is the international perception, right? Um, so my, uh, I, was, I wanted to kind of tease out of you, if, is there a, um, some, the beginning of a legacy plan going towards 2026 with respect to the Hall of Fame to kind of legitimize the narrative of U.S. soccer history and sell that not just to this country and to the local community, but, you know, there are going to be millions of visitors coming here. Are there going to be, you know, how can we leverage that to have exhibits in every single um, city that's hosting across North America? We're talking Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. How can we, here you have to work the politics and work with the Mexican. And I tell people last night, like, was that the finish line or was that the starting mm. point? It was really at the end of the day. That was the starting I'm point. I'm afraid it's the starting uh, point. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's one finish line, but, like, to be able to... To open up that building last night in the fashion that we did, and to walk around and talk to John Harks, Brad Friedel, 
Tiffany Milbert, Cindy Parlocone, and say, what do you think? And to have them look around and go, are you kidding me? This is amazing. That is what I wanted. That is what we all wanted in this project. I mean, it is, these are, these are the people, I'm, I'm not a young man, I'm not an old man, I'm 39, but these are the individuals that inspired me to work in this sport. And to have them say last night that what an amazing job this entire group has done, that, that's, that's the cherry on top to the entire evening last night. So uh, what's prepared me in my career is that passion I have for this sport, and I hope that it came out last night in, uh, in opening up that venue. I think if, if you, I, if, let me jump in there. I think we've had different careers. I'm, I wish I were 39. Um, I actually am 39, but you've got to do a little extra on top of that. Uh, I've been a very lucky, lucky guy, more than lucky. I don't know what the next word up the scale is there. I've been able to be at a lot of big things. I've had the great experiences, whether it's World Cup finals or uh, one that always sticks in my mind is the Pelé farewell game because I was with the Cosmos and I was one of the event managers that day and so forth. I think that's also the sort of thing that prepared me to take on this rather daunting challenge of um, loosely defined history. I really don't like to think of myself as a historian. I think that over aggrandizes. But I've, I've been to a lot of things. I've met a lot of people and I brought a lot of institutional memory to it. So I have to say last night um, and somewhat still this morning, it's quite, uh, it's quite an emotional situation to have seen some of that stuff come to life. Many things in those cases are things that I'm aware of, moments in the history, and as, as the members of SASH will certainly feel as well. Um, and that means, that means a great deal to me, to have some little hand in, in this huge, huge effort of many people. And, and as, as Jorn just said, when people last night, I, I had walked up to one guy and I said, well, you know, what did you think? And he just wide eyes said, awesome. I mean, that, I have to say, it make, make, makes us all feel good. It made me feel good then, but on behalf of Emily Sennett from Healy Kohler and Steven Plattenberg from Cortina Productions uh, and Darren Heminger from Capitol Museum. So there's hundreds of names um, who are responsible for, for, for what the Hall of Fame is. But I think we both have the passion for the game and the chance to, uh, to have... Uh, we, I think we both hope left something good behind uh, and plan to make it better. We've got a few tweaks still to make. We don't open, we won't, not quite open to the public yet. Uh, but when somebody, somebody says awesome, and it was sincere, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a, an early 21st century, you know, uh, glib remark, you, 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 you got to feel good for the game. Good for the game. Uh-oh. Steve. Um, there's just a couple times you used the phrase, not your father's Hall of Fame. You guys were in a unique situation that of the major sports, you were the only ones that were building Hall of Fame new. Um, I love what you've done. I'm curious, what was the mindset that you decided, that you decided let's do something new and different and nothing like what the other four Hall of Fames were? Let me start. So, I remember my first day on the job, after I went to the NEC meeting, I came back to the stadium, I remember looking down at the south end and it said, future home of the National Soccer Hall of Fame Museum. And it was a few weeks after that I started diving into the project, trying to figure out exactly what people were doing way yeah. before me and everybody else that were designing. And I wanted to get rid of that word museum. Not that it's a bad word, but it, I don't think it was what we wanted to portray with this Hall of Fame. Uh, and we replaced that with the word experience. And I've been very clear on that since day one. This is a Hall of Fame experience. Um, it, is, it is not a place where you go and just, we have beautiful artifacts. There is no doubt about that. Uh, but it's a place that we wanted to up the game. We wanted to up the game with our digital experiences, uh, virtual reality, gesture technology, 
Uh, you're talking about things that don't live in other Hall of Fames right now. Um, and I just, that, that, that was a turning point for us. Mm. Uh, it, it took me five months to get Dan Hunt to not say the word museum. Uh, and finally last night, in his speech, he was even like, experience, experience. <laughs> it took me longer to get off yeah, that word. I know, <laughs> I know it has. Uh, but, but that's what we wanted to create. We wanted to create an experience for people. And we're going to call ourselves mm. the most personalized experience in sports, because I think that's what we are. Uh, when you can walk into a building and it recognizes you, the building literally mm. recognizes you uh, and gives you information based on your what you sign up for in the lobby, uh, I think that's a game changer. Nobody's ever done that before, and we've all we've been about changing the game. Uh, you know, May 31st of last year, uh, we I don't know if people saw the video, but we surprised all of our Hall of Famers uh, in one day, right? In I can't even tell you the amount of work that went into pulling off surprising five people in five different markets across the country at 9 a.m., 11, 1, 3, and 5, uh, pulling off something like that because we, we want to be game changers. Uh, and that was a game changer. And I'm not, we took that from the Football Hall of Fame, right? But they may be. Did I, I mean, they cheat a little bit, <laughs> yeah. in that they're all there for the Super Bowl in one hotel, right? But we took that to the next level. Uh, you know, we send in a, Jeff Agus into the MLS office. We send in Anson Dorrance into, you know, a North Carolina Down FC. Down with Cindy, yeah, meeting, yeah. Right? Uh, we send in Brandy Chastain to a Tiffany Milbritt, hey, I'm in town, happy hour. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're about changing the game. Uh, and, I, and I think we've done that inside of this place. I think so. Let me just follow up because I think it's, it's I, I, I like, like the term museum. I admit that. I hung with it for quite a while. But then I recognized a loser when I saw one. And it was absolutely right to make it an experience. And now I'm referring to it as the exhibits. Don't use the word museum because I think that's somewhat fair. It's an, it's an exhibit. Um, change because things will change. Mm -hmm. I've gone to a number of Hall of Fames. The most disappointing one I've ever been to is the one in Brazil. Uh, my God, the only thing that was nice there was to see Gorincha shoe. But I mean, I'll just leave that alone. But the point I'm making is, is that it's great now. You have people coming here all the time. But after a while, they would say, "Seen it, seen it, seen it." So you may have a change with the same technology or something of that nature with every induction year. But what plans did you have for the future? Because I think that's one of the critical steps that's needed in art, in museums, in your, the experience, all right? To be able to attract people to come back. That's always a problem. Take, I'll give you the classic example. The last place in the world I ever want to go to is Disney with my grandkids and everything else because I've been there a hundred times. Disney's smart enough to recognize he's got, they've got to change it in order to bring people back because there's a limited will uh, group that will come there. So the same thing's going to happen here, let's be blunt. Hmm. All right? One of the problems right. with Oneonta besides the distance, which was always an issue, because you went up there, and then after a while, you said, hey, I've been there. I've been there, and it's not really much change. Uh, you know, I even remember the drugstore before the soccer ball went up. So again, I come back to the, the question, what have you put into the design elements to consider change, technology change? Right now, you brought up yeah. biometrics. I can tell you that will change within the next two to three yeah. years. That was more. The technology we have now, yeah. today, is not quite where it started out 24 months ago. Things change, and Cortina has done more than we so than we originally planned. But, but that you were thinking along oh. the I tell you what we have thought about is already a budget, financial a start. to change things, right? Because we know, we know we're going to have to. I mean, we are probably opening up last night, and now we're day one in. We're something in there is probably outdated already. It is. Yeah, it is. No, I it, sent you an email earlier. Yeah, no, yeah. I, know, I know. And we knew that was coming. And and I'll be honest. And we we have, I've had these discussions. I don't know if if if, if uh, Jim's been involved in them, but 
we've been we've been discussing what we need to do immediately to update the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. We're already having those discussions. Yeah. Because uh, we knew that the second we opened up the doors, something in there was going to be outdated. We don't know what it is yet, um, and we are already having discussions about how to raise that money uh, to make the changes that we're going to need to in the immediate future. I mean, the nice thing about being so digital is, and Jim knows this firsthand, is like when somebody's at 99 caps on the women's wall, we're already creating their entire. So when they hit 100. They can go into that place. So digital's nice, uh, but we know we're going to be outdated very soon uh, in certain things. Like, uh, and I'm not knocking anything, but I went to the College Football Hall of Fame for the All Star Game in August, July, August second, I think. And I'm walking around with my little lanyard, and it's just, it's not working, right? And those are things that we're going to have to keep our eye on. We're using facial recognition for the first time ever. Uh, and I'll be honest, like I am scared out of my mind the second Cortina yeah, when they leave. this building because <laughs> every day we have had problems with facial recognition and we, we, we know those things are coming, but we're thinking about them already financially because uh, we know that that's going to be coming. Uh, to make changes to this place every single year. Well, so you'll you'll be perhaps interested to know that uh, going back to the exhibit cases and so forth, they have been very specifically, and I might say cleverly designed by the Healy Kohler people, that we can change things pretty easily without having to do, we can open cases and make a switch out. Let me put it very simply. Uh, because it's been designed that way, even though it's uh, it may look permanent. No, jerseys can easily be. Somebody gets their you know their seven thousandth goal. We can get that jersey and pop it on a frame. There's nothing in there that is glued down, permanent, and that's by that is by design. Doesn't mean we won't have to do a little carpentry and repainting, but it, but things can be switched. We've made changes this week. We made changes this week. Yeah. I mean, Things have moved around from fly. case to case yeah. on the fly. Yeah, be, be, uh, I'm not saying we sat down specifically and said make it easy to change, but that was the mentality that Healy Kohler Design brought to it, knowing that it immediately has to be flexible. Wait, it, sorry, just a second. I mean, we you you walk into that building, we we have the Concacaf Women's Championship trophy from, from Wednesday, Wednesday night, right? We didn't know that was coming. Uh, but it's in that building, and that's that's how on the fly we want to be with things. Is like we we want to we want to shock and awe people, going, "Wow, that just happened yesterday," and it's already in the Hall of Fame, and we're already going down that path. Yeah. I, I, first of all, I just wanted to say, well, sorry, I came in a minute or two late. So yes. You probably said, but I did. I just want to say first and foremost, Jordan, I think it's amazing you're awake right now. Uh, and, and, that's fair. And, and, uh, <laughs> Congratulations to both of you, and thanks to both of you for coming in at 9 o'clock in the morning. It was such a massive, massive weekend. You've been working so many months in advance, and I think it's a sign of goodwill towards this society. First of all, that you're hosting us here and making us feel so at home. Of course. And, and um, also, again, that you're here at 9 o'clock in the morning in the middle of that weekend. Um, I get, I'd like to, first of all, make a, a request that that relationship continue to be cultivated, and uh, I, I hope in some ways that just like Sabre in many ways informs what's going on in Cooperstown and becomes kind of the spiritual godfather at times to that institution, that, that this organization can serve that kind of a role. Um, the news that the archive is going to come down here, to me that's the biggest news of the weekend. Um, I will say this, though, too, I think for a lot of us, the highlight of the weekend was seeing the trophy from 1884. Um, and I haven't been in there yet. And all I've heard are great things, right? Um, but I, I hope that this is out, that the door is wide open to try to get something done. I'll be talking to the hunts and I'll be talking to the Federation and say, guys, well, through through you, you're the, you'll be the hubcap here, um, that we, 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 need, we need to come together somehow. And I just have to leave it at that. But it's real high on the list of things, rather, other than changing a few labels, which we know are wrong. The, the relationship with Sash is, is up there. Uh, let me say, uh, as your uh, antecedent, uh, 
on this. You the shoulders upon which we all stand, Jack. Thank you for that. It, you, you've done a wonderful job. And as I said to Jim on Friday, there are going to be people who would say, well, how come not this and how come not that? And that's part of life. And there are mistakes in there, and that's part of a human project, too. And I know that you'll fight like hell to fix those things. And the ideas like, like Kevin has had, I, I think, are tremendous. And, uh, I always wanted to, to do that traveling thing. Mm -hmm. We weren't in a financial position to make that happen. But those are all valuable, important, tremendous things. And I want to give you a lot of credit. You were talking about induction the other night. The cliche that always went through my head at every induction was get the game so that's what it felt like to be in the game of the game store. And so keep enjoying that. And uh, I you know, I've known Chip for a long time, Jared, but just mad, but keep your enthusiasm going. Because just like that game day experience, that's the challenge. The challenge isn't to to hit the opening, the challenge is to keep it going every day and, and to not let the ennui of being in the same spot overcome you. And I think Michael's thought is very important and, and we worked hard at trying to come up with changes and the, the thing, that, the challenge of it that I found fun was to say, okay, what's happening in soccer today? How does that relate to what's yesterday? And what kind of artifact, moment, uh, shirt? Uh, you know, we were close to baseball, so finding their their example of how they dealt with that, and they were they're tremendous at that at, at uh, being very current. What's his name at the Grand Slam the other night for the Red Sox? I'm, I'm sure that the Hall of Fame is talking about the bat. But yep. those are the no. challenges of a sports mm -hmm. museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, but every day is like a kidney candy store yep. with your appetite. Yep. No, it's so <laughs> I wanted to thank you for, uh, for the hard work you've put in and uh, wish you good, good sailing. Not a day went by, I know, and I can I absolutely speak for Jorn too that every day we opened those cases and touched the trophies. Pretty good, pretty good piece of candy every day in there. There's an Olympic gold medal in that trophy case. I gotta tell you, it's pretty cool putting that thing in and out every day. It, it, that doesn't that doesn't get old. No. That candy always tastes good. <laughs> Roger? No, I just as another Oneana person, I wanted to second Jack's thanks to both of you. It's because of you guys. Yeah, no, it, this doesn't happen without. I mean, no. to follow in the. I mean, we just met on Friday, right? You know, to, and I've heard this man's 